to Midas Letter Live. We're back here live in Toronto after a week on the road in California and other points west. Sorry we didn't get to you, Justin. I know you're listening. I know you're bitter about me not calling you, but uh, what can I say? We were, we were on somebody else's schedule. We were playing Hollywood. We were real-life Hollywood guys now. Um, I might have to interrupt our little broadcast here because I left my luggage on the train because I was on the phone and got absent-mindedly off the train leaving my luggage to go back to the airport and uh, so I made a couple calls and they're on it so theoretically I should get my luggage back soon and uh, this would be one of the uh, one of the one of the side effects of long-term cannabis consumption I'm assuming is that short-term memory loss combined with absent-mindedness, tends to assert itself later in life. That's my theory. That's the theory of the day. Anyways, we went and saw MedMen in California. We went shopping at their flagship store in Santa Monica, and I'll tell you, that was a fantastic experience. They had probably one, uh, one helper, one bud tender, as they're calling them now, for every two people in the store. The bud tenders were very knowledgeable, very helpful, very friendly. The stores were, uh, the store is very interesting. It is, it is indeed a sort of replica of an Apple store with all the tables laid out that you can poke and prod and sniff and smell and look at different things. So we're going to actually look at some of the uh, interesting products on a separate clip that I shot while I was there. If I just happen to be wearing the exact same clothes and looking the same, that's just a coincidence. We actually shot that clip in America. Just saying. Anyways, um, in it, but there's other news going on today. I mean, uh, it was quite a day in the markets. We've seen a reversal after, uh, well, in Aurora Cannabis' face, uh, case, over 14 sessions of losses, resulting in about a 25% loss in the stock overall. So. Leading off the news today, Aurora Cannabis announced they've reached an agreement with Shopify where Shopify will assist in transitioning Aurora's current e-commerce site to a new Shopify-developed platform. Wait a sec, this is, this is last week's news, I've just realized. I don't know how that happened. Another uh, feature of long-term cannabis abuse is, uh, did I mention short-term memory loss and uh, absent-mindedness? Anyways, so uh, let's just cut to whatever we've got when we've got it. I'm going to uh, entertain you now with some, uh, let's see, where's the dancing monkey when you need him? Uh, okay, so as we've seen, as I was saying, in the uh, cannabis market overall, stocks are up, uh, canopy growth is up, Aurora is up, all, almost all stocks are up. Interesting uh, news release from, uh, Heritage Cannabis trading on the CSE under the symbol C-A-N-N. This company announced that it was taking over Canicure, which is a private company with, uh, with a 122,000 square foot GMP, former GMP pharma plant in Fort Erie, Ontario, with an option to purchase a 3.4 million square foot greenhouse operation in Leamington. Now, if you're wondering why I know so much about this company, it's because I've been trying to help them get uh, financed and everything, but they've, they've had some challenges, but it seems like they've pulled a rabbit out of the proverbial hat now, and uh, they're pending two weeks of due diligence, about to become part of Heritage Cannabis. So that is one, uh, that is one positive development, that's all I have to say. Uh, let's see, let's look at some of our other favorite stocks here on the Midas Letter Cannabis Index. We're going to come back to this because our good friend Special Ed is in the house today and we're of course going to do the, the usual uh, technical analysis on some of, the, some of the names we love. But uh, yeah, big things happening in the space. Canopy growth up 5.34%. Uh, up at dollar seventy, Aurora is up three point eight percent, up twenty eight cents. Med Relief, well, Med Relief, just about to become part of Aurora, is up one point six percent, or forty two cents. Afria is up four point eight nine percent, or fifty one cents. Kronos Group is the only red one on the uh, cannabis large cap index. It's down one point five percent, down ten cents at eight forty five. Uh, even MedMen. Even MedMen, the uh, 
dubiously deserving recipient of lots of negative press is up 10 cents or 2.13% at this hour trading at $4.80. So overall a great day for the cannabis stocks putting to rest at least for 24 hours momentarily the idea that the, the bloom is coming off the cannabis rose broadly. Uh, if we look at some of the uh, let's see the small cap index is up 1.74 percent the CSE index is up 1.5 percent the Midas letter cannabis uh, the venture index is up 1.6 percent so interestingly when there's a big move in the market overall it is the large caps that benefit the most in the cannabis space the cannabis index being up a total of 3.72 percent or 224 points at this point uh, so great things happening there. If uh, what else happened? There's a interesting scenario developing in the California cannabis market that I noticed being there, and that is that the dispensaries are all down to about 25 percent of their normal variety supply of different types of dried bud. The reason for that being that the state of California has rolled out new testing rules that are stringent and difficult to pass and what's happening is the large majority of growers are finding themselves unable to successfully pass the, the pesticide testing in California resulting in a supply squeeze. So for example, uh, we were down there, we talked to Steve D'Angelo, who's the founder and CEO of Harborside, and Harborside's one of the oldest and biggest compassionate clinics in California, and he's usually got 40 varieties on the shelf, and he was down to just 11. Ease, which is the largest delivery service for cannabis in California, was down to just seven varieties on Friday, and uh, even MedMen had a limited selection of dried flour, which at first I thought was, uh, you know, indicative of poor management, but not at all. They were very much caught up in the, uh, in the, uh, in the supply squeeze. So we're actually going to have MedMen in here uh, again soon to talk about what's happening with the company and uh, what, the, what the outlook is for their shares. We're going to have, uh, we went to Jetty Extracts and we captured some of the best imagery we've shot yet on Ari Cine cameras, which are the same cameras that are used to shoot Hollywood movies. That was quite thrilling. Uh, so there's, there's lots going on this week. We've got Cam Batley in here on Wednesday. Cam's going to talk about the holistic global strategy for Aurora Cannabis. Uh, we expect that the deal with Medrelief will be officially closed at some point this week. And uh, that is <laughs> Suzanne. Could you come here and show me that, please? Because I can't see that far. Two minutes. Two minutes. Ah, two minutes. And then we're going to cut to a, uh, a, a role that of, of uh, an interview with Vic Newfeld that we did. Boy, if I'm sounding a little scattered, is, did I mention I left my suitcase on the train? <laughs> yes, I did leave my suitcase on the train. I've also had a grand total of about three hours sleep since last night. Got up in Vancouver at 4. No, sorry. I, the alarm went off at 3.30. But because I was so mentally concerned about missing the alarm and the flight back, I was actually started waking up at about 2.30. What time did I go to bed? Mm, probably about 11. So yeah, not operating on a lot of sleep today. Have the uh, issue of the missing luggage foremost in my mind because the missing luggage is full of treats from California that I, uh, I don't want to lose. Um, and so we're going to come back here in just a couple of minutes and we will talk to, uh, actually I'm not sure that we're going to have, which guest we're going to have next because as I say I just got back from a long trip and we will see what happens in just a moment. I think that was two minutes, was that two minutes? We'll not find out in one second. My guest here today is Mr. Vic Newfeld from Afria. He needs no introduction, of course. Welcome, Vic. Oh, thanks for having me, Ben, and better you than James, actually, so this is good. <laughs> it's good to hear. Now, uh, investors, uh, I'm sure, are aware of the, the huge press release that came out this morning. Yeah. Um, Afria, 
of course, uh, was involved with Synthian Biosciences, uh, a subsidiary, uh, where they purchased a holding in Latinum uh, Holdings from Synthian. Now, how does that, how does that, comp how does that acquisition play out in your in the company's greater in grand scheme plans? Yeah, great question. So, I think to begin with, it, it further solidifies our global leadership. Um, we have been very, very focused uh, for a year and a half in certain European areas, and we remain very focused and uh, energized in other countries that we are trying to penetrate. Uh, but in terms of Latin America and why Scythian, uh, it is an area where we didn't really pay a lot of attention to. Um, we, we, we were very focused on more um, mature markets, uh, markets uh, that uh, presented themselves at the time. Scythian, on the other hand, was like, like a mining company looking for an exploration company. Uh, Gold Corp, Barrick, uh, they reach out to exploration companies uh, that have already found uh, certain nuggets around the world. And for us, it was a huge de-risking of deployment of resources and capital. Uh, we were brought into the Argentinian opportunity about a year ago, and I spent uh, two different uh, in-market trips nurturing relationships with uh, departments of health and in this case Department of uh, Agriculture. In terms of Colombia, um, five-day in-market uh, with uh, understanding the environmental, political, safety, uh, the whole concept of why Colombia. And then I met the in-market teams. And I tell you, Ben, uh, you can have the best strategies, but if you don't execute, uh, you're, you're not destined for success. So one of the other objects of why we spent a lot of time uh, in Argentina, but also Colombia recently, is to understand the bench strength of leaders. Um, Colombia, for example, Cocana, and, and the uh, tremendous passion of the individuals there. And that kind of solidified the deal. So Scythian to us was really searching marketplaces where we did not have our own uh, footprints. Uh, and the transaction was uh, first with a supply agreement, and then I decided, no, I want this to, to be fully control under the Afria banner, Afria International, which is a, a division of Afria. Okay, great. Now, uh, speaking of the Argentinian and Colombian opportunities, um, with Colombia specifically, with ideal growing conditions and low labor and input costs, where you might get uh, cannabis yields down to five or 10 cents a gram, uh, does Afria view uh, this as a potential global manufacturer and, distrib and distribution hub for CBD oil worldwide? It it's hard to imagine any other nation competing on that sort of cost scale. Yeah, so Colombia actually has um, three fingers of its strategic plan. One is to grow for in-country requirements. Two, exporting to those Latin America countries that they have um, economic zone treaties with. Um, including, say, Mexico, Chile, Peru, Brazil. Um, and then ultimately, uh, although not factored into our pro formas, an export outside of South America. Whether Canada, Europe, uh, let's not even go there because the, it's too far a journey down the road. But back to the Colombian opportunity, um, what really excited us, other than the tremendous leadership team uh, that have been at this for over two years, I may add, uh, in the beautiful coffee fields uh, on the uh, west side of the Andes. Uh, I say coffee fields because the climate control, the soils, the uh, water management, electricity, safety, uh, all of those are big check marks. Uh, so we have pursued this opportunity, now culminated with today's announcement, basically really wanting to move that their business plan forward, but in a bigger, more meaningful way. So we have 35 acres. Our designs over three phases of the project are to build three, three different phases on 20.5 acres of land. Uh, that's capable of over 50,000 kilos a year. Probably more uh, than is required for in-market. So yes, now export, as I've already shared, are those opportunities. And oil extraction is absolutely part of it. So. The low cost, five, ten cents a gram, I think you're pretty close to the ballpark there. Uh, very cheap labor. Uh, the land was, was almost um, pocket change in terms of an acquisition. Um, the most level land that we've seen in 
all of the uh, Colombian uh, landscapes that we, we reviewed. Uh, it's absolutely ideal. To Argentina, though, uh, something that began over a year ago in the Department of Health and getting the only license uh, issued by the Department of Health for importation of our high CBD oil, uh, Redu, um, orders coming from the Ministry of Health, but uh, at the outset are going to a certain university and a hospital for research purposes. Uh, very timely interview because just last week we received notification from the Ar Argentinian uh, regulators that they, uh, over the next 90 days, they want to explore and really come to a conclusion on a joint venture where we actually build our free greenhouse technology and grow in country. So Colombia will be um, uh, an interim step on exporting to certain countries, but like many countries in Europe, they all want eventually in-country cultivation so that they can control, regulate the safety, the efficacy, et cetera. Of course. Now, uh, moving on to the Jamaican assets of the deal. Now, is the attraction of that jurisdiction uh, the same as in South America, where it could eventually become a manufacturing and distribution, distribution hub within the archipelago of the Caribbean? Or how do you view that? Is it more of a local market thing or you know, a distribution with, within the, you know, the Caribbean itself? So Jamaica provides actually four different strate strategic options for us. One, uh, grow domestic, sell domestic for the recreational market. Uh, the Joe tourist. Uh, we know we're not going to sell to residents of the country. They all grow in their backyard. Uh, secondly, it's the Jamaican medical and where that's moving toward in terms of dispensaries. Thirdly, reaching out to certain other Caribbean countries and their treaties where their various ministries of health are now talking about using Jamaica as the cultivation hub to service their medical needs. And fourth and finally, and again, not calibrated into our pro formas, but looking at export. I mean, October 17th, here in Canada, we know it's happening. Uh, can you imagine if a Freya brought one of its brands forward with the Colombian gold, as an example? Um, very excited about that uh, opportunity, uh, but it's just one of four different strategic paths, uh, all four of which we will be pursuing. Of course, and some of that whether that opportunity materializes will depend on some of the advertising regulations by Health Canada. And mm -hmm. uh, there's some chicanery going on there uh, in, as we've seen the press in recent times. Now, uh, would you like to comment, uh, perhaps comment on, on what's going on and, and how you see that playing out, whether you see the restrictions being lifted or eased or perhaps, uh, you, know, that, you know, perhaps they won't be eased at all. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So. If you were James West, I'd correct you on your vocabulary. Your chicanery is not a word I would have used <laughs> for certain activities of uh, specifically to other licensed producers. I would call it slipperiness and flying in the face of ethical behavior because everyone knows what Health Canada rules are. Uh, billboards, concert endorsements, sponsorships, etc. They have taken this uh, liberalized uh, interpretation uh, to their advantage. Um, we've understood that warning letters have gone out, uh, but again, this is really not in concert with the underlying theme, the understanding, the, um, the integrity of what Health Canada was trying to bring to the table. The ACMPR, which governs this today, and the advertising rules as presented, and more clarity going forward, but these sort of activities, some marketers would say very far-reaching and edgy, uh, but those that uh, really understand long-term business and brand awareness would call it trickery and slipperiness because this is total violation of and quite frankly, in my opinion, it's giving the middle finger to Health Canada. So I take this to mean that APRIA will abide by the, the rule of the law and, and not you know, engage in, in what some other companies out there are doing in terms of you know, putting their branding out there contrary to the rules? So we have a series of brand activation tactics and activities uh, all lined up. Um, I refer to it as the dominoes are ready to fall. Uh, it's a matter of when different organizations view the, uh, the timeliness of this activation. So we're still waiting. It's, it's premature for, in our pr perspective. But when we do, we will make sure that it is not in violation of the interpretations as an average 
individual would interpret uh, the ACMPR rules. So we are out there and we will be uh, activating uh, for brand awareness. We have many brands that we're bringing uh, uh, to the uh, Canadian consumer. Uh, we've got every province now uh, registering our products. We're doing like more than our fair share. I'm very, very proud of uh, my sales marketing teams on bringing these brands to the table. Our price points, our product uh, variety, our uh, promise of availability. Uh, but we will, we will not flaunt um, in the face of Health Canada. Fair enough. Now, just refocusing back on the Cynthian deal for a second. Now, this deal puts Afria, it vaults you in clear position in the Latin American Caribbean markets. Now, other LPs out there, some of the larger ones are kicking the tires and have participated in lim limited scope, but this is sort of blows all that away in terms of leadership and, and scale uh, and assets in your possession. Now, how do you plan on exploiting that position and maintaining that position uh, when the flood of new entrants is only going to grow? So let me knock off these countries one by one. Uh, Jamaica, we are only one of two uh, level three licenses awarded by the government. Um, we've already had one full harvest uh, sitting in the vault. Our second major harvest is uh, in process as we speak. So product availability and product quality is, is already uh, on our balance sheet. Uh, we're moving forward on, on the uh, li proper licensing and site uh, leaseholds on on, I guess they call them ganja houses, but basically uh, retail outlets. Um, and uh, we're very, very excited about what the price points these things can, uh, can uh, bring forward. Um, Argentina, as I said, uh, we are absolutely committed to being part of the, the government program there. Um, the relationships we've established, the Afria story, uh, that uh, has really taken us to the level we're at there. I feel very, very confident on, on some huge successes in Argentina. And Colombia, I've already shared enough, but again, I just want to reiterate that, that, uh, that the whole business model in Colombia, low cost, uh, climate, land, et cetera, et cetera, is really, really part of, of, of where and how we're going to move Latin America. So I could tell you between LATEM, this acquisition, by the end of 2019, on a conservative basis, we're probably going to uh, generate 50 million revenue minimum, and I'm going to say 60% EBITDA, not margin, EBITDA, unheard of in this industry. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And that will be accretive? Very accretive. Um, that's why certain investors who are looking at today's transaction may not quite understand, but you need to... You need to embed yourself today at lower costs, lower entry costs, uh, and, and, and bring on board the right talent. You know, um, certain organizations talk about strategy, we execute strategy. Uh, and, and the free execution uh, is, is it's really a culmination of many strengths, but one for sure is making sure the leadership in country is, is uh, beyond reproach, has integrity, are really solid, solid, understanding the political framework, the uh, regulatory framework, and know how to grow. And, and that's what uh, Colombia brings, Jamaica brings. I mean, Jamaica, we have a 19 uh, Cannabis Cup winner as our master grower. Um, again, I speak to the Jamaica Gold one day being uh, on the shelves of retailers. Um, not sure where in Ontario, but I can <laughs> tell you other provinces will, will have the retail. So it, uh, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity. And, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say Brazil. So Scythian, again, has the Rolodex, had the relationships, and has the people that have moved the needle with uh, certain Brazilian regulatory bodies and a major uh, pharmaceutical player. Um, I'm going to call them the, the Apotex of Canada, um, all part of their team. And part of this whole agreement is that we have our first right of refusal for a very cheap entry price of $24 million uh, for 50.1% should they be successful in their license. Now, we were hoping before today's announcement they would have crossed the finish line, but when lawyers get involved, there's all sorts of complexities and delays and, and push-outs, and that's what's happened here. But I feel very confident that uh, once Brazil moves, uh, again, Afria at a very, very 
uh, I'm going to call it cheap entry price, to an explosive market called Brazil. That's the golden nugget. Like Germany is to Europe, Brazil is to South America. Yeah, absolutely. They have about, what, half of South Americans' total population, something like that. So would you foresee that optionality kicking in, uh, perhaps some point in the near future, or it's sort of hard to see how that's going to play out as of yet? It depends on the, on the license, uh, correct? So this is a James West question, you know that, eh? Uh, I would suggest to you that before the end of this year, um, we will know with certainty whether or not the, uh, the licensing process with uh, the ministers of health, justice in Brazil, uh, our relationship partners uh, that will remain uh, non-descriptive at this time, will have moved the needle far forward enough that uh, uh, and I'm fully hoping and expecting, uh, wanting to uh, transact this and, and send 24 million shares of a dollar's worth of uh, free of shares that way. Mm -hmm. It is, it, Colombia is really exciting. If Colombia is a home run, uh, Brazil is a grand slam. Great. Well, Minus Letter will be following the story, and I'm sure I'll be writing a whole lot more about it. Thank you, Mr. Vic Neufeld, for joining us in studio today. <laughs>
Okay, so then is there, um, is it going to be like California where there's also going to be ultimately a recreational market? Well, in 2020, the bill comes up. I, at this point, I still think it's going to remain medical. Florida, Florida has a vibrant medical system, and I just don't see it transitioning that fast yet. Right. Your stock's on a bit of a tear mm -hmm. over the last couple of sessions, up, uh, call it 15%. And uh, is that in anticipation of, you know, what's, what's the moving parts that are happening between your company and Afria? Yeah, I think, you know, we have always gone to the marketplace and there's been no disillusion that, you know, Afria has provided us with the IP, the know-how, but we are two separate companies. Mm -hmm. But with that, down the road, yeah. down the road, there could be a situation that the regulatory environment completely changes and allows for investment from TSX listed companies or New York Stock Exchange companies that allows for ownership or greater ownership in American companies. And I would say that although we are distant cousins, we do share a lot of the same philosophies. And with that being said, it's a perfect opportunity for them to enter downstream into the US. Sure, okay. so. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go way out on the forward-looking mm -hmm. statement limb here, and you just shut me down if you want. But it right. sounds to me like Afria and Liberty Health are trying to make very clear to the market that until something changes, Liberty is going to move forward in the U.S. market, and ultimately Afria will have the benefit of Liberty Health's progress. Well, that's exactly it. Um, I would say that I'm quite confident that you'll that. Afria will instill a certain level of um, messaging to the marketplace over the next few months that we are their horse. Right. Um, and ultimately, the bigger we grow, the better it is for Afria downstream. This is about IP and know-how right now, but it'll be about a lot more in the future if um, Afria is able to invest heavier into Liberty. Yeah, you bet. So. I would assume then that uh, you know there's probably a lot of irons in the fire in the United States that are at various stages of evolution that you probably we probably can't talk about too much. But um, it's now markets closed. I know you're issuing a press release tonight. Are you, is it okay to talk about it at this point? Yeah, we can talk about it. You telegraphed almost perfectly um, a few <laughs> moments ago in the sense that we have just arranged for a lockup of a transaction that was to take place, which is the next tranche that Afria was to dilute. It's roughly 16 million shares. It was gonna bring them from 24% ownership of Liberty Health Sciences to 19%. The transaction will still take place to a third party, but that third party will now be set in a lockup arrangement for the next 18 months with the opportunity for Afria to purchase it back at a later point. And I think, again, what that really shows is that Afria does have an interest in Liberty. It does have an interest in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an opportunity for them to hold a very, very strong position in Liberty um, for the future. Yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, it's kind of like a, a bit of a trend among mm -hmm. Canadian LPs. I mean, we saw Aurora do an interesting transaction with a warrant and, and uh, sort of divesting itself superficially right. of control over its U.S., formerly U.S. subsidiary Australis. And yet the transaction that resulted makes it very clear that this is still very much controlled by Aurora shareholders. The same thing is now seems to be happening with right. Afria, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's like this is this is LHS is the Afria play. Well, you would think so, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's here's the the realities of the industry. The TSX right now has made it very challenging for people to to work within the U.S. and to invest in the U.S., especially some of the larger LPs in Canada. So people are getting creative. And I don't want to say that there's manipulation in the marketplace, but they are getting creative. The U.S. will be the largest market in the world. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt. And uh, for any of the larger LPs to not participate, I think, I think would be a little bit uh, foolish at this point. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so this lockup is, uh, is with a third party who it's disclosed in the press release. 
Um, and these, these guys are big shareholders in Afria. Yeah, one of our largest shareholders outside of Afria, and they've, they've shown a consistent commitment to the business, and I, I think this actually reinforces their commitment. Um, they were willing to participate with Afria in securing this lockup at a nominal amount, and um, again, we have very, very good shareholders, but Afria does want to position themselves for the future. Yeah, okay, well that's fantastic, George. We'll leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in due course. Thanks very much for your time today. Thanks a lot. We'll be right back with Ed Molesky. Special Ed Molesky is here. We're going to take a look at the LHS chart, the Afria chart, the Aurora chart, and a whole bunch of other charts. And uh, that will happen as soon as the music plays here and we put Ed in this seat. How about that? This is that work for you, Control. Welcome back. I lied. Ed Molesky is not in the chair yet. Suzanne is on her way to go get him in the other room. What shall we talk about, everybody? It's just you and me. You and me at the table here. Shall we talk about California? Let's talk some more about California, okay? What about California? Um, California is interesting. You know, you hear about California. It's the biggest marketplace in the world. Before there were... Uh, before January 1st, 2017 came along, 2018 rather, there were over 50,000 dispensaries operating in California. They changed the rules January 1st. The, there are now t approximately 10,000 different licenses in California. What's going on with the other 40,000, Ed? What was the question? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyways. Special Ed is here. Special Ed's here. Say hi, hello. Hi, hi, everyone. Nice to be back. Yeah, good to have you James back. James was in, in L.A. I was in L.A. Par, uh, sampling all the new products. I was doing a great deal of sampling there. <laughs> Let's just I, say I that. Had, I had an ex interesting experience on a Saturday night. Did you? What would you do? I walked into a dispensary on, uh, out here on the West End. A legal dispensary? I was legal. <laughs> I walked in. They asked me for my ID. Nobody, nobody tackled you at the door? Pin your arms behind your chest? Very simple uh, procedure. Where, where was this dispensary, Ed? If I wasn't in such a hazy state, <laughs> I probably, no, I you, would know. You sampled some of this stuff. I sampled it. I'll tell you, there was a lot to sample. Yeah? But they weren't giving away samples. No. You had to put up the old... Uh, oh, really? We actually went and shot some footage at an extraction facility in California, in Oakland. Oakland. And we all got care packages. Yeah. Really? We got now, care packages. Did you need a different kind of care package after you used that care package? Indeed. Well, I, yeah. In fact, so the one care package that I would be demonstrating to you if uh, I was rolling the reel from right. back right. In, down there right. that I made there before I came here so that it was obvious that I was still in California when I was making that video and didn't right, actually right, have yeah. the product here in Canada. Well, because you, you don't, have, you didn't bring a product back. <laughs> what, do you think I'm crazy? Yeah, yeah. that would be illegal. Oh, let's just say, let's oh. just say that. Oh. You know, boy, oh boy. Yes, no, we didn't do that. Um, but, but let me ask you this: uh, the, some of this stuff is fairly potent, I would think. Like that's the that's the gist of. Well, you so know, here's we, the this thing. is not uh, the the stuff we used to have 40 years ago. That you could grow. Well, the, uh, so I got that. I had this. Uh, I had this sativa yes. uh, live resin, and it was it was on the label. It said 18% CBD and about 4% or sorry, 18% THC, 4% CBD. And I thought 18%. I should be able to handle that. And I got off. Oh, of this, contrary. Well, I got off the plane. Yes. I whipped out my little vape. And you I got off one. the plane, then you go it went high. Well, the, well, I came down and I went back up again. Without getting on the plane. <laughs> without getting on the plane. <laughs> Why would you? So you, you can go on a trip without getting on a plane. You can you can stay up there for a long time. Anyway, right. so I, I took a haul off this thing. We jumped in a limo. The guy actually said, hey, no, no, it's fine. You can smoke in the limo. I'm going to smoke one too. He's got his vape. I've got my vape. Elm's got his vape. We're all vaping away there, and yeah. of course, in this yeah. little environment, it's like we're trying to impress each oh. other with the biggest lungful possible. Oh, vape each other. 40 minutes later, we get to the destination, and let's just say I hopped out of the limo, and I was high as fuck. It was unbelievable. 
I walked in. That was and FUT, I, by the way. That wasn't what you thought you <laughs> was, It was F-U-T. It's a new word we have here. I walked into the bar, and the bar was owned by a woman I know. And I said, and Sally's like, oh, my God, I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah. My mouth is so dry that my, seriously, my the, my tongue is pasted to the roof of my mouth. And I'm like, like you were eating bananas all day. You are eating bananas all day. Great to see you, too, and peanut butter. But can I get her to drink? Right away, my mouth is so dry. A war, a And they just started laughing. Of course, they start pounding double absolute vodka, mandarin, yeah. soda, small that, glass. That's a good thing to drink when your mouth is dry. Yeah, is double, exactly. Well, double absolutes. My there mouth was not dry that cut, that in cuts, seconds. That cuts it real fast. <laughs> it was gone. I was, no longer, I was no longer dry, but I was still high. Yeah. And shortly thereafter, I you was were, a little bit tipsy. Tipsy. Because I found myself in this environment of friends I hadn't seen forever. In this bar I used to frequent for years, and it was just yeah. like, it was, and we got in there. So are you, are you uh, familiar? Can you know your way around L.A.? Are you one of those? Uh... I've been in L.A. a few times, yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I used, to, uh, I, used to, I used to go to L.A. a lot. There was another uh, corporate uh, incarnation that I was involved with. Didn't you bump into some, uh, some of your uh, colleagues down well, there actually, on this actually, I ran into David Argudo from uh, High Hampton down there. Jeepers, creepers. Yeah, I, I saw. I know, I know David. Yeah, I, ran, I, spent, I spent probably three. I, actually, David and I. And, uh, and and some of our film crew went out and had a had a really nice dinner at um, it was called Bazaar by Jose Andres, and it was uh, yeah, it was bizarre. Yep, it was was, was it, it bizarre? Was not though? Bizarre. It, it was, was like bazaar. B a z a a r. Bazaar. B a z a a r. Yeah, exactly. I got that sense. That Have you ever been to one of the Jose Andres no. places? No. Okay, they're in no. Los Angeles, Boston. They're all over the place. Yeah. He's got mini bar. Another establishment of his. He's got yeah. uh, he's got Halea in uh, Las Vegas. All Spanish cuisine. Yeah. Very good, very good Spanish cuisine. So, anyways, David and I had a, a had a lovely dinner together. We had a great bottle of wine and uh, and just then, one bottle. Uh, I think we did just have one bottle because we were drinking these fancy little cocktails. In fact, they were so fancy I had my pinky out like that when I was drinking them. Like, they're in these oh yeah, that's the way glasses. you do it. That's the way that yeah. that's. Hoity toity. Uh, we were hoity toity. Yes. We were high. Oh, no. Hoity toity. If you don't drink it properly down there, you're going to get thrown right out of the state. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say they were in no hurry to throw us out because we were spending money. Well, I think we pulled up an ATM to the table and just said, yeah, just keep punching in the code and there we go. But no, that was great. And yeah. then we went and visited, um, we, went, we went to Oakland and saw uh, Steve D'Angelo. Steve D'Angelo is a really interesting guy. He's uh, he's a co-founder of the Arcview Group, which is a big investment uh, right, sort of right. club in in the United States. They right. run conferences all over the states in different parts. They're basically got a show going on somewhere almost every week. They've raised a lot of money for uh, U.S. cannabis operations. Steve himself is has been an activist for over forty years, advocating for well cannabis for wellness. So he's he's Canvas a guy who, yeah, he was interesting because he he felt that you know this idea of using cannabis for you know rec recreation was actually missing the whole point of what cannabis has to sure. offer, and so we spent a great deal of time with him talking to him on our documentary. Yeah, and I got quite an education. Yeah, well, I kind of think you know I I've sort of uh, uh, had my share of cannabis over the years, and I'm starting to think maybe I've been sort of. I'm getting some of the health benefits of using that cannabis without knowing it. In other words, one of the unexpected uh, uh, benefits here is that uh, you know I have uh, relatively good health. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, you look you look robust. <laughs> robust. Yeah, robust. And um, yeah, the uh, the interesting thing about this cannabis thing. So there's all these studies coming out that yeah. seem to draw a correlation between long living yeah and chronic cannibal cannabis use not cannibalism cannabis use but if you're a long-term chronic you, cannabis user you tend to live longer skate past all of the ailments that take down other people you live longer and you have a you, higher you know you know what you, you know what I'm starting to actually and I was sort of saying it tongue-in-cheek but I'm actually starting to think you know because I I've sort of gone through and I've been a user I must admit you know I wouldn't say every day but Who's counting? Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I think there's a lot of things that this this stuff does 
to relieve pain. Yeah. Gives you better sleep. Yep. You know, like uh, I got some. I got a bag full of treats. Eighteen hundred milligram CBDs. Yeah. For my dog. So my dog, my dog, every summer gets this disease they call black skin disease, and it's doesn't do doesn't hurt her or anything. She just all her well not all of her fur, but a lot of her fur falls out. She looks like crap and she stinks. And it always happens starting in July and goes right through to the end of the hot weather. And as soon as the hot weather goes, she grows back her fur, she stops stinking, we give her a bath and she's fine again. Right. But did you uh, ever think maybe giving her a bath more than once a year? Oh just well, kidding. No, we well <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, here's just the a thing. joke. You know you know you know how you know how frequent it is to healthily give a dog a bath? I'm just gonna say once a month. Yeah, once a month max. Once every there you go. Days. See, folks. Yeah, you're a dog lover. I'm a dog lover. Do you have a dog? Yeah, uh, my daughter has a dog, and the, it's a little Frenchie. Uh, what they call a Frenchie, a French uh, bulldog. bulldog. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peanut. 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 That's you're a, famous now. Char charming. Peanut. Can we get pe peanut on the show? Get peanut on the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what if? What if she's? What if she's been waiting to come on the show, and she started talking in bark talk, like? Like, for instance, well, she, she wouldn't talk like a human, but she might just... That would broaden our audience, well, and dogs would start watching as well. And people would love it. Especially the well, male dogs, because she's quite a looker. Oh, is she? <laughs> Who else can you watch your dog? Who else can you sit and watch a show with, with your dog, and yeah. it's like the dog's getting something out of it, you're getting something out of it. I mean, you could look at each other when something smart is said, yeah. and high-five each other, or I guess it's high four. There was this, this uh, thing going around the internet about what dogs do when the owners aren't there yeah so they show this one thing where the dog sits on the couch and uh, you know get some get some snacks and he yeah. turns on the TV and he turns on to a channel where they're showing do doggy porn yeah so the dogs watch doggy porn <laughs> where do you find a channel where they show doggy porn no, that's like dogs. it's all dog no humans involved no uh, humans okay. okay doggy porn just just so dogs. there's so, no doubt they're doing so, it doggy style <laughs> <laughs> There's no missionary position no, involved in no, this, no, no. unless they're really well-trained dogs. Like, where yeah, do you find dog yeah. porn? Is there a dog porn no, channel? No, it's a joke. It's oh, a joke. Okay. It's a joke. Okay, you had you had me. Yeah, yeah. let's. Yeah, okay. You had me wondering there. I'm. Uh, Anyways, let's go say hello to our audience on YouTube. Freedom Unleashed is here. Modern Picasso. Okay. Wants to know what is my favorite munchie after vaping. I'll tell you. It's uh, chicken wings and blue cheese, but they gotta be the right wings. It's gotta be crispy, crunchy, spicy, yeah. not you, you like, swimming uh, in sauce. Do you like the gooey wings or you like them? No, nice? no, I don't I like don't, the gooey ones. I don't think many people do. It's just no. too damn messy. I think the gooey ones are double just, Double test. baked. That's what you say. Yeah. Double for. baked? Double baked. I got two methodologies for when I cook wings. Tr Everybody's invited to my house. I've got okay. the smoked on the barbecue dry rub wings, which result in a super crispy wing. That is I've heard of smoked flavorful. on the water, but never smoked on the barbecue. And then I have the cooked in clean peanut oil at exactly 380 degrees. Right. Clean peanut oil, you use it once, you never use it again. Never I know it's a bit of a waste, but you compost it. Hey, yeah. it's not a waste, it goes into the earth, it's all good. Hey, you can pour it on some bread and make the bread taste like peanut bread. Yeah. Freedom Unleashed likes my, he says, nice call, gotta be the right blue cheese too. That is so true. It's gotta be the right blue cheese. Yeah, real blue cheese. None of this fake stuff. No, 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 no. None of this watery Some made of that bullshit. fake stuff, it's actually almost like green cheese, right? Yeah, well, green cheese, you know that blue cheese called Roquefort can often be green once you break it open. Yeah, I know. And well, actually, I, I know. when we make blue cheese at home, Freedom, we take a jar of Lighthouse, chunky blue cheese, Right. And then we take half a brick of Roquefort and chop it up and throw it in there. Wow. And now that's some serious blue cheese. You like prosciutto? Prosciutto? Yeah. Sure, I like prosciutto. Yeah. Nice. I, like I wouldn't. I don't want prosciutto. I don't crave prosciutto once I've, you know, smoked the big fatty. No, no. It's not yeah, you got to. The munching thing can be a bit problematic because there is so much food out there. And again, not knocking the food industry, but you know, and I had a bit of a problem here. A little. A little scare? A little scare. Uh -oh. A few years ago. And I, 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 the more I read, the more it, I came, it's about processed food. You, you cannot eat processed food. Huh. Processed food doesn't go through you properly. For, no? Because of inflammation things and, you know, there's too much sugar in it and that causes inflammation. So you really want it, like avocado is really good. Things that cause you to just, you know. Sort of loosen a bowel. <laughs> Let one fly, so let, to speak. Let, 
Two exits, no waiting. <laughs> there she goes. Yeah. Um, you know, Ed, we're going to say hello okay. to some of our people here right. on Facebook now. Otto Lee, good day. Where is Ed? Ed is right I'm here. Right Obviously, here. that was I'm an right earlier here. comment. Uh, you know, Canopy is just drooling over Cali. Welcome, Mr. Ed. Otto says hello. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, how are you doing? Um, yeah, California is uh, is interesting. Lots lots to talk about. The American is coming back. Everything's coming back today. Chris Smith, Rom Jeffrey, Jeffrey Learmont, and four people joined. We've got quite an audience on both programs today. See, that's what happens when we take a day off. Ben, T Brian yeah. Tavares, bring Ben Ward on. Ben will be back. We'll have Ben back soon. We have Ben back regularly. Ben's one of our favorite guests. But is we ben, had him on ben last Ben Ward related to Ben Dover? No. Jesus, Ed. Come on, no, we're trying to run a clean show I here. That, what kind of joke is that? That's that just, just brought us down to like, it's we're now down here. Just a joke. Oh my goodness. You know, it's just so funny, you know, I, I'm a sort of a punster, you know. Yeah, I see that. I like that. You okay, know. Okay, great. Let's just keep it. Anyways, hello to Van Ho. Hello to David Alexander Digley. I'm going to say, I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly. Chris Smith, four others, four others. Why won't it show us who the four others are? Come on yeah. now. That's not fair. Anyways, we're trying to say hello to everybody. We're trying to be egalitarian about it. Pat Quirk says hello. Or no, we say hello to Pat Quirk. Michael Carpenter, hello. Hi, Matthew hello, Weaver. hello, hello. Suzanne Garcia is watching from in the control room. That's pretty interesting. And now let's go over to our... Can you believe this? We actually have a system in there that allows us to stream in real time live to both YouTube and Facebook. So no, over on YouTube, we've got 32 folks watching. I'm gonna to try to say hello to everybody right now. Modern Picasso, hello. He says, welcome back, Freedom Unleashed. Hello to you too. Dylan Campbell. How about Tilray Home Slice? Somebody mentioned Tilray, Til yeah, because somebody said it came out last week or the, within the last five or six days. I think the price was 17 bucks. Started yep. trading at 21, immediately went to 30. Yep. Now, somebody, somebody did something right there I don't know much about it except yeah. it's a cannabis deal. Well, so Tilray was put together by the guys at Privateer Holdings, Brendan Kennedy, and the other investors in Privateer include Peter Thiel, one of the co-founders of Twitter, PayPal oh. co-founders. Oh. So these are guys basically- These guys have any money? Yeah. Let's just say that they were in no hurry to go public. Like they could have gone, they were yeah. one of the, yeah. I think they were the third license and they could have gone public and they could have ridden this wave, but they were in no hurry because those, these guys have very deep pockets. Well, it, it, so, so what, what this is saying, and again, if you haven't been around markets as long as James and I have been, which is quite a long time, especially me. <laughs> I was I've gonna been say, I, whoa. I'm in the, you there, put me, a group of bunch of me in I there? I saw dinosaurs grazing <laughs> out the window. I did, I did one day, I thought, anyway. So, so, so if you have well-heeled people around a, a deal, yeah. they, they can give the impression or the illusion that this can do different, uh, is in a different world What's or- What's Tilray's symbol? T-L-R-Y, I believe. T-L-R-Y, let's yeah. pull up a chart and see how they're looking today after, what's this, their fourth day of trading? Third fourth day of or trading? fifth? Invalid symbol, T-L-R-Y. Okay, Tilray, Tilray. Okay, you oh, know Somebody's what? gonna send us, a, t gonna tell it to us. Let's see, okay, let's, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's yeah. just, okay, YouTubers, Facebookers, yeah, feel what free. is Tilray's symbol? We're we don't know. We don't know. We don't know, we don't have a clue. We're just newbies here, nobody, nobody's got the news on. Everybody went to get some snacks. Yeah, uh, let's see, uh, T-L-R-Y. T L R Y. On the Everybody's... Q. On the, it's got it. Maybe you got to put in the U S. Oh, it's NASDAQ. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We don't have U S symbols on Midas letter. We're only doing Canadian no, stuff. No. Yeah, say serious. it ain't so, James. I'm sorry, say it sorry ain't to so. say it's so. I'm sorry to say, but it is so. What okay. Was that? So quickly, we're going to go to uh, finance. Uh, let's just put the symbol into Google. That'll be the fastest thing. We'll have to look at a Google chart here. We're going to have to get those T L R Y. Right. 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 But it was we'll T L R Y. Put that in there and see what happens. There oh, it is. Wait, that, that's that? a, that's oh, since July the 19th. How about that? We do have U.S. symbols. You got to put in the U.S. Okay. after the symbol. So there's the first day. Look at this. This, I think it, I think the issue price was 17, but wow. our viewers can see we had a big, big day here. Yeah. I didn't think that's a great candle, but look, yeah. that was the bottom. And it yeah. just, and then look at, yeah. look at this accelerated yeah. move here. Holy no, smokes. Yep. Yeah. Up That's to thirty-four dollars uh, today, yeah, and now it's under thirty. So the stock has doubled. This is, 
this stock is in a different league altogether. Like, I mean, would you start buying it now that 30 bucks, well, Ed? Like, it basically, if you were in with the in crowd and you had it at 17, it looks like most, there's not much in the way of sellers, it's all buyers. I, I'll bet you there's going to be another pop here, too. And I think if, if you're watching this and is you Is that wanna, a technical call or is that yeah, just a Yeah, it's a technical call because you've had a great correction here yeah, and, you, and yeah. you've had a good run to new highs, yeah. correction. And, and th this is still in, clearly in an upward channel, yeah. even though it's only three days. But what, I, about, what about all this, Ed? Like, what about these? Uh, well, know, look. That's looking look, pretty grim to me. It, it looks grim, but it yeah. was also looking grim right here. Well, that's a good point. You know, so, you, you know, you, you want to see, has there ever been any grim, any grief before? Grim leads to grief. <laughs> so, so. If the Grim Reaper follow, follows through There's with this promise. There could be some grief. If the Grim Reaper is oh on gosh. your back porch, boy, you've got some grief coming. Boy. Anyway, uh, yeah. so you know what? I think there's a bounce there. I'm not saying I would go out and buy it, but I think there's a good chance it's going to go test those highs yep. because of the deep pockets involved in these people. And these people yep. have stupid money. Stupid? Stupid money. That's pretty stupid F money. F.O. money. So let's see. You how many shares do they have out? Yeah, let's see that. I bet you, I'm going to take a wild guess. I'm going to say 40 million. <laughs> that's, that's a, oh, look at this. What do we got here? Uh, but, that, that, that. Oh, we don't have, what, 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 what? We don't have the shares outstanding. Scroll down a bit, maybe. Does that help? No, nope. no shares outstanding. Okay, we're going to go take a quick look at their website. I could probably get that from, my, except my phone's dying. Market cap, $3.2 billion. So 40 USD. Times, well, I'm wrong. There's 120 million. Yeah, 120 million shares out, Ed. So, wow. okay, $3.2 wow. billion. Now, this is a NASDAQ deal. So we're going to go look at Edgar and see what their financials look like. Not that we're, not, not that we're trying to take... Yeah, but it's probably got a lot of cash and very strong shareholders. Well, we know, we know they've got strong shareholders. You know, this will be interesting because Tilray Til has been uh, operating out there on the West Coast in Vancouver Island in under a cloak of, you know, secrecy. privacy. No, I'm not going to say secrecy because it's private. Like, Brendan's been in this seat, right. I don't know, three times in the last four years. He was probably my fifth cannabis interview. And Bre Brendan is the? Brendan's the CEO. Of Tilray. He's, uh, no, he's the CEO of uh, Privateer Holdings. I think he did become management of Tilray, and okay. I could have that wrong. I'm going to have to go back to my notes, but, but he's, uh, he's, he was, yeah, he's from Privateer Holdings. And Privateer Holdings raised $100 million from this group of high, well-heeled tech investors from Silicon Valley. $100 million. $100 million. Privateer's raised over $100 million. And, uh, you know, no hurry to go public. I mean... Taking the thing public at 17 bucks a share and promptly doubling is very much a Silicon Valley sort of MO. Yeah, I mean, but you, you just can't do that unless you have deep pockets and you spend on sophisticated marketing programs. How do you get to a sophisticated marketing program in Canada, Ed? I know, you call 1-800-MIDAS letter. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, sec.gov, Tilray, let's take a quick look at their filed documents and see what they look like relative to the Canadian space because that's going to be interesting. So, okay, we saw that in the one day, uh, on the one day look, Tilray is actually down today. And interestingly, uh, the other billion dollar company on are, the... Are, you, are all up. Well, no, but the other billion dollar U.S. company, which is uh, Kronos... Well, they're not U.S., but they're from the U.S. They're down today, so I wonder if I right. wonder if Tilray is going to become the bellwether for U.S. stocks. Something that I think is quite possible. Yeah. What is going on here? So this is just the action today. It looks like. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see there? What do well, you? Well, like? you, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like the fact that we had a good correction. Then we, we set a new high to 34 and change, backed off, then we tested that high and, and failed. This, yep. So we got, a, you know, we got a higher high and a lower high, and then we came down and we broke this number. Yep. So, you know, but I, I got to think we're, you know, if, if it gaps down in the morning, I think it might be a buy. Yeah. You know, for a trade. Okay. I mean, I'll, I, I maybe, maybe I'll buy some in the morning. Wow. Maybe I'll buy like a 
20, 30 shares or something. So they went public, they issued 9 million shares. 9 of, million? Of class two common stock. Now, Ooh. they don't have class A, B, C, D, or E. They have classes one and two. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to dive in on this before we opine on. Yeah, what I we don't. Think you know, it's, it's we. I don't think we are qualified to look at some a few uh, bits well, of information. We're going to we're going to make sure that we know what we're talking about before I think, we start I think we spilling should, yeah, that. Because but they did, went public, so they issued nine million shares at seventeen bucks. So there's not a lot a, of stock. They raised a total of one hundred and fifty-three million bucks. Yeah, uh, and the proceeds before expenses to Tilray was one hundred and forty-two million. So that's interesting. There's Canadian underwriters involved. Must have been Northland hard. Capital Markets. Whoa, who is that again? I can't remember. We'll I find think, out. I think BMO and Cowan was it Cowan? And, I can't. Is there a company Cowan? Cowan, yeah, Cowan. I heard that they might have been involved, but you know, you couldn't like. How would you get some of this? You had to know somebody to get this paper, I think. Yeah. Well, nobody called me. Yeah. But that's because, uh, okay, so here's their financials. I've got up on my computer, but I don't have NDI running, which I will get doing in one second just so that they can all see this. Here we go. There we go. Okay, there's their financials. Revenue. Oh, well. Yeah, expressed in thousands of dollars. So 12 million bucks. And last year. Year ended, is that one full year? 12 million bucks for a year. Cost of sales, 9 million bucks. So, so year ended two. December 31st. This is... This is more the current number here, twenty million for two thousand and seventeen. Yeah. Okay. So. And uh, look, look at look at the this numbers. This looks though. like this looks like three months over here. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna say. Yeah. Let me pull that up a bit so we can see. Yeah. yeah. Three months. So so what's four times seven is twenty eight. So if they're moving, they're making it. You know, they're growing. Yeah. But uh, look at the the losses are Ooh. narrowing. Ooh. But look from. Uh, Ten cents a so share this, this year end a, December sixteenth. Is there an owl in Nine here? Nine cents a sh share in twenty seventeen, down to six cents a share uh, uh, loss. I so know, they, but you know, look at the revenue. Yeah. The revenue yeah. is climbing, the losses are diminishing, the margins are growing. Still doesn't justify a three billion dollar market cap, does it? Does it? Well, this you is know, a lot of you know, in there. You, you know what? Look, <laughs> to get capped at three billion dollars. In a, in a normal industry, yeah, you need a little more than, than what this this a little oomph. You need some oomph cash flow. Oomph. This is out. This is cash going out the door, never coming back. Yeah. Now cost you know I don't know how big cost of sales. Look at that cost of sales for the three month three month that increased in 2018 to four million bucks. Well, I'll call it 3.9. And then. Third quarter or three months into March 20th. Let's assume that's the end of the first quarter. Uh, it was 2.26 million. Be, like, I'd like so to the cost of sales are rising incrementally. I'm assuming that's going to be marketing expense. Research and development costs have deteriorated dramatically. They've been chopped down to a fraction of what they were. Wait a sec here. That's the year. So 975 for one quarter. Call it. Nope. They're still going up too. Never mind. Sales and marketing expenses. Have, Would have gone to, way up. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, well, that, that's because they're now public, so that's... Okay. Interesting. You know, yeah, 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 that's what happens, right? Like, look at this. General and administrate. Look at this general and admin. Quarter, year ago, million and, million and a half bucks. Four point... That's a triple. Yeah, well, obviously, a part of the process of going public is a big yeah. increase in that kind of expense. Well, we'll have to get like Brendan Kennedy back in here. We'll rake him over so, the coals. So here's what I don't. Here's what you know. It says here. Uh, just one other point here. It says, uh, okay, our this so, program reflects the conversion of all its nations preferred stock to plus. Because they say there's there's the same number of basically uh, basic and fully diluted, and yet it sounded like there was a hundred. How many shares did we say there were in this thing? One hundred and twenty well, million. They, well, that was our estimate, but uh, again, that's. But they've only issued how many shares on this? Nine issue? million on the IPO. Well, then, then there's another ninety million floating around somewhere, no? In the private. In the private. Well, that's okay. So here's interesting. They put a hundred and I think it was a total of hundred and forty million in the last I checked. So if the hundred and forty million represents ninety million shares, what's their entry price? You know, we could. Well, we're. You know what? Let's stop speculating. We're going to go yeah, through the financials yeah, and come back. Let's let's. Uh, 
you know what? I got nothing to do now for the next 24 hours. All so right. I'll just and then you're my, an accountant, right? I'll just go to my room. You're a CGA. And I'll have a lot of fun going through these statements. You know, might be a little easier to do with a little, little uh, puff. Yeah. Puff the There's Eugene dragon. Siriani has joined the show. Hey, Eugene. I met him once hey, back, way back at one of the, uh, where did I meet Eugene? I don't know, but I could, I'm not going to. Uh, Dog and pony I'm not going to say more than that. Let's just say that I've met the gentleman, and it's good to good to see you on following us. Good to see you. After all this time, Kyle Johnston. Kyle Johnston. Hey, Kyle. How's it going? That's hilarious. Geez, Ed, we're just getting more and more popular. Well, here, you know. You know what? Okay, so do you want to take apart another stock? Do you want to rake somebody else over the coals? Sure. Okay. Who do you like? Who do you like? Who don't you like? Well, I'd like to keep looking at weed. All right, let's because take a look weed, at weed. Weed is the bellwether. Weed's the bellwether. 900 and I million think pound gorilla who you can, uh, we can't. You can inch, extrapolate a look little. Look at that, up 6% today. Yeah. Now that's, there, there you go. Now, but, but look at, we've had a real steep correction in this thing. Yeah. And, and you know, we've, we've gone from 40 down to 32 and change or 30. Yeah. You know, and you then were today, saying, and today we, we could have a bounce and we well, did. Yeah, but it could we, be just a dead cat. It could be a dead cat. I don't like this, this, this wick here. This, this wick. I like to. If this is a real bona fide, strong move, I, I would want to see it close near the highs. I think that would. Well, we'll try to make that happen for you, Ed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you, call up your broker. Call up <laughs> call your, your broker. Let's, let's all everybody, go Everybody, everybody, go buy some stock right buy, now, and uh, you uh, sellers, stop selling. Oh wait, the market's closed. Nobody can do anything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus so so look, that that's still I mean, you know, we've we've uh boy, we've got a full turn here in the last two months. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's uh, now there's a there's a you, you see this? These these are gaps, right? These gaps actually Ed before you uh I yeah. think Oh yeah, what is that gap there? That's a gap. Yeah. Yeah, so so now we Big gap. we're Let's we're take it down to the three month here. We've uh, we've we've found a little support there. If that gap okay, gets I filled. I just took it down to the three month look. Yeah. Just trying to trick you. Okay, there there. Trying to pull a fast well, you, one on you. You, you want to move the gap closer to me so I don't have to walk so far. <laughs> well, exactly. There we're you go. <laughs> and and you can use your well, wheelchair now. You you you've obviously recognized my uh, my age. Your physical limitations? Oh, holy smokes. <laughs> I know. You got to stop smoking that stuff before the show starts. Yeah, but it's made me, made me live longer. And it's made you a, a, a damn sight more erudite than normal. There's, there's a word erudite. in the day. Erudite. Okay, erudite. Do you know what erudite means, anybody? I think it means well-learned. Well-learned. Right. Let's, well let's look at Aurora today. You know why I want to look at Aurora today? Okay. Because I think, uh, I think Aurora is about to, uh, you know, got sold off like crazy in that, uh, yeah, in the med yeah, relief deal. Yeah, yeah. The med relief deal is going to close. Everybody who wants to leave the party is free to leave. Yeah. Hasta luego, muchacho. Have a fun life. But I'll tell you what. Is, that, is that right? 19 million shares. Is this thing trade that much every day? No. Well, not every day, no. But just, but, gen but just generally when we're working on it, Ed. Yeah. When we're working on it, it trades. When you like put that. the call in? Well, when, no. When we James put the call in, everybody. <laughs> That's right. As long as, as long as we're working with uh, Aurora, it's, it's going to be a thing of beauty. Uh, no, but Aurora's got uh, Aurora's got a lot going on. It was oversold, as Ben made the case in his article last Friday. So Ben point pointed out that Aurora had lost, gone closed red in 14 straight sessions which was the worst performance of any uh, cannabis stock. And, and you know, you point. talk to most technical guys, they'll say when you get to 12, 13, 14 consecutive moves, same way moves, yeah. then you're getting into like 100 year flood type events, statistically. Hmm. So you get into like, I, I have a good friend, he says, look at this, the Dow's been down 12 days in a row. Then if he sees a 13 hand, like a, he'll say, holy smokes, this is going to reverse. And it, it's uncanny. And this thing went 14 days in a row? 14 days in a row. Yeah, that, that, that probably means we're probably going to get a pretty good rally here. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, you, you know what? Look, this is no dead cat bounce? Well, here's the pro. Here's what you got. You got, you got support. Right there, yeah. right there, right yeah. there, right. That whole Touch thing. Touches support and bounces. Yeah, it, if you, if this thing gets breached significantly from here, because you've yeah. got it over, you know, six, seven months. Yeah. So you got definite support there, and then it rallied sharply, and then yeah. back to the support. Yep. Back to the support. Yep. Rallied, rallied, failed, back to the support. Yep. So, 
What's it telling us, Ed? What's it telling us? It's telling us one of two things. <laughs> one of five things, potentially. It's telling us to buy, buy, buy. No, sell, is that, sell, sell. Is that goodbye? No, is it a goodbye? Uh, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Jesus. You know what? We got Cam uh, Cam Batley's coming in here on Wednesday. Wow. We're going to have him for a solid half hour. We're going to rake him over the coals something fierce because he's telling me, he's telling me that they have a holistic globalized strategy that he's going to articulate for me. He's going to pull together all of the different disparate sort of corporate right. sort of channels they got going and explain to me how that all works because we're not, we're not the swiftest. We're not the sharpest tools in the shed no, here, no, are we? Ed? No. No, but we can ask some pretty damn fine questions once in a while when we've got Absol our mind on Absolutely. It, especially after we've been sampling some of the products. <laughs> which which I, is... When it's, now, I understand or, 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 when sorry, it's taking legal. your medicine. When, taking your medicine. Got to take your medicine, Ed. It's time to take Do you your have medicine. a prescription for man of wine? For who? For Canavona. <laughs> for Ebena Bob Nuth. That's all, folks. Yeah. Um, do you need a cannabis uh, prescription not, not to this, buy it at uh, your store? You Nobody asks you for a prescription? You, they want to see your ID. We probably don't want to give they away the They want to see your ID. They look at you, the picture and look at you and say, yeah, this guy looks sick. <laughs> In you go. <laughs> I think in your case, they wanted to make sure that you were of sufficient age. <sighs> Yeah, well, yeah, because they said, have you discovered the fountain of youth? <laughs> anyway, that, that, that was the, you know that, that, that stupid uh, the thing with the Do Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the world? Oh, yeah, I always thought that was you he, in disguise. He, there you go. They said that he had once found the fountain, fountain, he had once found the fountain of youth, but he didn't drink from it because he wasn't thirsty. I thought that's brilliant. Like, think about it. It's like a yeah, yogi bear. Yeah, the of youth, yeah. But you're thinking, ah, you know what? Not thirsty. Yeah. yeah. No, no thanks. It's like yogi bear's advice for us. Well, it wasn't for stock prickers. It was for sports casters. And he said, you know, it's all right to predict the future. Just don't say when. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at another one of our favorite stocks, Ed. Let's take a look at GTI. I. GTII, Green Thumb Industries. That's not the one I was thinking of. I was thinking of GTech. We'll come G back to GTech. GTech, okay. Let's look at GTI. This is another U.S. play. Yeah, that and, has and, been... and I just want to caution the, uh, the look viewers at, that look it's at it. down 2%, Ed. It's much more important. It's much easier to look at a chart that's got a. What got, is this one telling you? Well, okay. Let, well, first of all, tell me the time frame there. This is uh, since June one, 14. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I, I'd like to see. This company went public on June 14th. Yeah. This is the trading since then. So it, it came out around eight bucks. Yeah, this is another US operator. This, this is a crucial level right here, there's no question. In a very short, in a very short term world. 11 bucks. You know, like it's sort of like here, we, we the, look at this thing, it yeah. rallied here, yeah. green, green, yeah. green, red, red. You wouldn't want it to go below this, the, this area right here. Yeah. If it did, it's probably got it's probably got uh, some selling at its back. Could, could be, eh? That's interesting. So we're seeing all the U.S. operators. Is this a U.S. one? Selling off, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would explain that the U.S. Are, US are still getting some nice premiums in the, in, yeah. in the first early days of trading. All right. Let's but that, that might be something to, for the viewers to look at and say, hey, what did this do? And maybe uh, Tilray does the same. Well, we're going to keep a close eye. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put out the word to the boys to build us a U.S. a U.S. index. Build us an index of Canadian listed companies operating in the U.S. and see what that looks like. I bet you that's going to be an interesting index. Okay, let's take a look at G-Check, our friends Nelson and Blady. Uh, Norton. Norton. Nelson. Uh, no. Yeah. No, not, no. Norton's his uh, bro brother. Right. Yeah, he. Yeah. Well, it's looking, looking. The volume's dried right up there. Clearly, oh, uh, wow. Clearly, it's time for you guys to get on the Midas letter train. Yeah. Uh, looks like Last the shareholders, the shareholders would appreciate that. Now, again, you know these these shorter term charts are much more difficult to read, but well, I will say got, what, that what I really like about this there. chart is this, that kind of a candle. That, which looks is like a, it, that looks like the letter T to me. It's a long tail. So it's basically opened. It opened at a point, traded down most of the day, and then closed right around where it opened, huh. which, 
which long tail is a, is a bullish candle as far as I'm huh. concerned. Long wick, bearish. Uh, okay, so that's that a general rule? Yeah. All right, I'm going to look at some of my other favorite. I'm going to look at Canex. So one of the things we did while we were down in Oakland, and we were going to have this spectacular video, we had Ari cameras down there. Ari's are what everything in Hollywood is shot on. Yeah. And this laboratory environment, environment of Canex subsidiary Jetty Extracts. And this video is going to be something else. It's probably about three weeks away from being completed. But Canex is one of these things that's just been in this nonstop four-wheel drift that just looks like it's never going to end. Volumes dried up, and, uh, and it's a U.S. operator. And, and, and can I also say, like if you look back in here, the daily ranges, like from the tip of each candle to wick, yeah. much, much wider action, yeah. suggesting or, or implying serious volatility, but that volatility is being sort of wrung out. It's, it's, you can well. see, look at, look at the little, little candles. It probably hard to, you couldn't light these candles and see very far because <laughs> they're so small. There's no wick. There's, <laughs> they're wickless. Wick. And you, you know, know what? what? Maybe we should go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia. There's an idea. Um, this is my boarding pass for my flight this morning. Yeah. I left my luggage on the train. I am going to cut this show short today because yeah, okay. I want to go do, back do, to do the your thing and, and just find my just luggage. just think in terms of uh, maybe maybe all 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 that partaking in this well this, no these you know drugs and everything if well there's hey there's no doubt that the consumption of cannabis over the long term contributes to short term memory loss absent mindedness and the proclivity to lose your train of thought all acceptable to lose your luggage on the train of thought there you go that's exactly what happened. All acceptable casualties for the benefits yeah. of cannabis, long life, yeah. general yeah. good mental yeah. health, a sunny disposition. Uh, you, know, you know what? If, if you were really depressed and you lost your memory, you would no longer be depressed. Is that how it would work? I think so. See, I just forgot what I was going to do here. <laughs> I, I forgot where I am. I forgot what day it was. I forgot my name. Oh. Let's see who we got in the studio this week. We have some great guests this week. Okay. We, we're going to have... Uh, Oh, well, we have a call with MedMen. We don't have them in the studio yet, but we might have MedMen back in the studio for a conversation. We have Cam Batley in here on Wednesday. And uh, so far, that's it. But we've got, uh, we're owed a visit from Bruce Linton. Yeah. We're going to crawl all over him, see what, uh, see if he can be in town this week. So we've got Cam Batley. We had Vic last week. We've yeah. got, uh, who else we got this week? We'll probably have Greg Engel from Organogram because we're yes. owed a, a conversation with him. Um, we're not doing a, a lot right now in other areas. Well, it's summer. It's, you know, the trick is to enjoy life. Smell the roses. Smell the pot. Smell the coffee. Smell the flower pot. Smell the, smell the beer that you just spilled all over your lap. In your car as you're driving down the 401 with a big reefer hanging out of your mouth. <laughs> what do you mean it's legal? I'll be fine. <laughs> Give me the way. Anyways, we're not advocating okay. for the no, irresponsible yeah, use please, of alcohol please. or cannabis. No. That's Either just one. not what we're doing. This is humor. We're trying to humor each other. We don't actually care that much about you guys. Anyways, no, I'm just kidding. We love you. We care about you. You complete us. <laughs> Where did that come from? Mini me. I don't know where we're doing, but now we're going to say goodbye. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh boy. Is it, is it a wrap? Here's uh, not quite. Can you please ask him about the Space Bear Terpene Company? Let's make a note of that, Ed. You got a pen handy? Make a note of that. The Space Bear Terpene Company. Okay. So, uh, we're going to go to some of the questions terpene, from the uh, from the audience here. We're not going to say goodbye yet. We're going to say goodbye at five o'clock. Is ter terpene something to do with turpentine? Uh, terpene. You don't. Yeah. And you smoke the stuff and you don't know what terpenes are? It's spelled with an E, not a U. Boy. And oh, the other ones, the second one's an E, not an I. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so T-E-R-P-E-N-E. -E. Tell you what, we're going to start, we're going to have, we're going to have cannabis chemistry okay. tutorials in here soon enough. Bear? We're going to have Allison Gordon back here at some point. She said she was going to do, do a show and has since stopped returning phone calls. I know it's because she's busy, not because she hates me. Ersky on YouTube wants to know, what about isodial? Do you remember Isodial? Yes, I we do. We had them in here. We're going to have to get them back. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, here's a little bit. Of, here's a little tidbit of knowledge from one of our audience members called Pete Penn One. He says Brendan Kennedy plus Privateer paid sixty million dollars to Rita Marley for the rights to Marley Brand 
and it is in lit they're in litigation over this natural Marley spirit brand owned by Montobacco of Montserrat. Wow. Sounds like all Sounds kinds like of Rita's uh, about to get a little bit of a payday. Yeah. Now, is she related to Bob? Uh, yep, yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, that would Shares make sense. the last sense. name. Yeah, I think that was his wife, wasn't did, it, Rita? Did, did, uh, I, I heard a story that... Oh, uh, we're getting off into the area. I heard a story what that, we're talking that about. Uh, Bob Marley smoked Marlboros. Get it? Mar... <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, we're going to have to bring in a comedy writing team now, Ed, because we're starting to we're starting to lose the what? plot. What? That, that was funny. <laughs> That's a good thing. Let's see. Oh, there are people laughing. There's LOL. Uh, anyways, we got uh, we're being recognized today. Yes, Freedom Unleashed. You are Gray Matter. You are for sure two albums. Great to have you guys here. Really, really, we love having you guys here. Ask us some tough questions. Yeah, ask us some. Uh, yeah. None of the, none of this easy easy yeah. questions. Yeah. Try to be tough on us. Okay, and let's go look at the Facebook crew now. Who we got over here? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we've got a whole bunch of people here. Bagshaw's watching. My buddy Bags. Went to school with Bags. Hopefully Bags, we're going to... Pretty soon again. Uh, lots of good people here. S Stefan Bender. Hello, welcome. Francois Rivren. Hello and welcome. This week we're going to try to get to 3, start at 3.30 every day this week. We have a whole bunch of guests. We have a whole bunch of excellent product from the United States that we're actually going to shoot videos of, in the, that we shot videos of in the United States. And it wasn't here. It's not here. We're going to be in the United States when we play those videos. Yeah, we're just going to fly back. Yeah, just for uh, the video. Raw. And uh, that's it. So... I'm sure you're probably all sick and tired of hearing every YouTuber with a channel saying, hit the subscribe button, please, like us, friend us, you know. So we're not going to say that. I don't care if you subscribe or not. It doesn't matter. We're going to be here at 3.30 every day. You don't have to subscribe. Who cares about subscribing? I mean, we're not trying to get to 10,000 people so we get free use of the YouTube studio down the street. You know, that's what you got to have to get in there. Anyways, if we got to 10,000 people, we would get such better placement in searches for cannabis stocks in YouTube. It would be sick, Ed, sick. Anyways, no, no intelligent questions going on here. Okay. It's all just commentary. And so let's call it a day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you tomorrow at 3.30.